What companies deserve your hard-earned dollar? Which would you want to work for? How can you know if they share your values? Just ask us. Just Capital is a nonprofit that tracks who really means business in supporting workers, customers, communities, the environment, and shareholders. We measure progress, track success, and help them be better. When you see the Just Capital seal, you know what's real because just business is better business. Visit justcapital.com to learn who makes your dollar count. Good afternoon. Getting right down to business here with the news driven hour in the four o'clock hour, doing more at four as Jonathan Honig knows so well. He'll be joining us live here in just a moment. We're on right after Ben Shapiro and just before the 790 KBC News Blitz with Randy Wang at five, doing more in 2024 at four in the afternoon. And now the first quarter of 2024 is in the Wall Street history books. We're doing it live here on the air, 790 KBC, streaming live online worldwide at kbc.com and the on-demand Moteca Money podcast at kbc.com, YouTube, Apple iTunes, and all your favorite podcast platforms. Well, stocks did end this abbreviated holiday-shortened week, mostly higher with the S&P 500 and Dow showing their best gains in more than two consecutive quarters since 2020. The Dow coming in for a closing gain today of 47 points, ending at a record high, 39,807. The S&P 500 moved up six points, selling at a record close, 5,254. And the Nasdaq finished 20 points lower at 16,379. It was just about a week ago that the Nasdaq stood at a record high. Stocks ended the week mixed, but still saw large monthly and quarterly gains, boosted by the latest readings on the economy and hopes for at least a couple of rate cuts this year. We've seen uh, the big three equity uh, averages finishing uh, mostly higher today with the S&P 500 and Dow ending at new records. We did hear from Fed Governor Chris Waller, who said uh, high inflation readings and strong job gains reinforce his view that there is no rush to cut rates this year. We did see uh, the market coming in with solid monthly and quarterly gains. The S&P 500 up about 10 percent so far this year. Its strongest first quarter gain since 2019 when President Trump was in office. The Dow has rallied around 5.6% this year and stands just shy of the 40,000 milestone. Get those 40K hats printed. The NASDAQ composite closed up 9.1% in the first quarter. And the final trading day of this month and a quarter, often accompanied by a rebalancing as portfolio managers adjust their investments to account for the changes in the values of their stock and bond holdings. Something we'll talk to Jonathan Honig about here shortly. Also, the uh, small cap stocks, as we talked uh, with Jonathan Honig last time, uh, on a tear. The Russell Tooth K was on pace for a 2.4% weekly gain, and that trounced all three of the major averages, including the S&P 500, which is uh, posting a 0.4% gain for the week. Yep, Bitcoin also on the rise. Other cryptocurrencies largely higher today with the end of a holiday-shortened week in uh, the financial markets. We see the price of Bitcoin up about 1% to above 70,000, close to 71,000, with the largest crypto holding above the the key level of 70,000. Bitcoin hit a record high near 74,000 a couple of weeks ago before a volatile correction occurred. We'll be talking about that coming up uh, later this hour with one of our uh, crypto experts. And thank you, Your Honor. One-time crypto king Sam Bankman-Fried, also known as SBF, former head of cryptocurrency exchange FTX, was sentenced 25 years in prison today for his role in defrauding Users of FTX, prosecutors had sought as much as a a 50-year prison term. He was convicted on seven criminal counts last November and has been held in a federal prison in New York since then. I'll talk cryptos later this afternoon with Jason Nelson, reporter at Decrypt Media. Financial literacy, which we strongly believe in here, is more important than ever. And getting young people started early on financial education. I'll talk about that with Maya Korbik, a CPA, founder of Wealthy Kids Investment Club and author of the book From Piggy Bank to Stocks, The Ultimate Guide for a Young Investor. But first, gather around, kids, on your money, the markets, and the economy. Joining us live now is Jonathan Honig, Fox News contributor, portfolio manager at Capitalist Pig Hedge Fund, and author of the book Price is Primary, How to Profit with Any Asset in Any Market at Any Time. He's also editor and did the introduction for a lovely new book titled Can You Really Love a Dog? Jonathan Honig, thank you very much for coming to the line here this afternoon. My pleasure, Frank, and great to be with you again at 4 o'clock. And keeping on this you know, idea of doing more at 4, fascinating statistic that 40% of all the trading days in the first quarter were a record closing high for the market. So as you said, new closing high today, and this has been a, a hell of a quarter 
This has been the most record highs uh, in, in one quarter since 2013. Got that data from Bespoke. So the market's been on a hell of a tear. But what's been interesting to me is what's been really moving higher. We've talked about it as big cap tech, Frank, for so long. It actually wasn't technology in the first quarter. It was energy leading the charge. So what I see is a, a changing of the guard in, in financial markets. It's a positive thing. Uh, positive thing, big cap tech had its day. So other areas like small cap, as you said, energy, they're places to make money uh, in 2024. I just think it's not going to be those old names, which even in the first quarter got trounced by other ideas. Very impressive start to uh, 2024. And by the way, gold also reaching uh, for new heights, up more than $42 today at uh, 2254 I believe it was, uh, at the close here. Oil also higher, back above $83 a barrel. So uh, we're seeing everything go up. And and I should note, tomorrow we're going to be getting an important reading on inflation. The markets will be closed for Good Friday tomorrow, but uh, government offices will be open and that includes the release of the uh, what we understand is the Fed's favorite in inflation gauge. So uh, the Fed obviously paying attention to inflation, and inflation pressures seem to be uh, rising, if anything, given that disaster back east uh, in Baltimore this week and oil prices uh, moving up, and uh, everything uh, seems to be uh, pretty high these days. Uh, what's your uh, expectation of what we'll get tomorrow? Well, unfortunately, Frank, I think that trend towards higher and hotter inflation is going to continue. I mean, this is looking – from my eyes, more and more like uh, Jimmy Carter's term uh, back in the late 1970s. That's when really energy prices really started to spiral higher. And, you know, you're seeing that once again with commodities writ large. XLE, that's an ETF, which we've talked about on, on your program before. Just a basket of, you know, large cap uh, uh, energy stocks. It's broken out to new 52-week highs. So energy has done very well this quarter. Uh, gold, as you mentioned, is at a 52-week high. A lot of the precious metals now breaking out. So, you know, I think the big surprise perhaps, uh, you know, for the rest of 2024 is how hot inflation is running. People still talking about the Fed cutting rates, Frank. I mean, interest rates are actually up this year, up about 7% on the 10-year uh, in terms of appreciation. So I think the, the number is likely to be running hotter than most analysts have expected. And inflation, which, you know, President Biden had been kind of taking a victory lap for in previous weeks, I think is going to surprise us all about seriously how much uh, how, how much higher it can go. So tomorrow we'll get to that reading and uh, investors will have a chance to, to react to that uh, when the, the futures markets open, what, over the weekend? And then uh, we'll get back to business on, on Monday, April 1st. So be aware that Monday is uh, April Fool's Day. But, uh, of course, we'll be, uh, we won't be fooling around here. We'll be doing our normal uh, program here, uh, as usual, here at 4 on Monday afternoon. And, and um, unfortunately, some of the uh, shipping companies and cruise lines have been, been impacted by that disaster in, in Baltimore this, this week. Uh, Carnival Cruise Lines uh, shares, I see, dropped uh, nearly 5% today. That company has been on a roll uh, given um, there's a tremendous demand for uh, pent up demand for for cruises but it looks like uh, the the news there is that they expect a hit of about um, 10 million dollars because of that bridge collapse they've had to reroute some of their their cruises and so forth uh, what about the uh, the fallout from that uh, disaster this week well it, obviously it's a, it's a terrible just tragic uh, disaster that's going to ripple through the economy but so many thousands and thousands of people's lives and you know, our hearts go out to them. What worries me about uh, shares of Carnival, Frank, and a lot of these leisure oriented names isn't so much that terrible tragedy, but frankly, the debt, uh, I wouldn't equate it as a tragedy at any similar level, but the amount of debt that has been piling up in the first quarter for so many Americans, you know, the average Gen Xer now, Frank, of which a, a group that I'm a part of has about $9,000 just in credit card debt. So, you know, we've, we've seen this spending boom for so many of these leisure style names, uh, you know, be fueled on, on debt. So I think, unfortunately, as rates continue to go higher, a lot of the names that have enjoyed that, uh, uh, that luxury spending and, and that extraneous spending are likely going to go by the wayside. On the air live with Jonathan Honig. And let's take a look at, at some of the other uh, movers. Um, you had uh, mentioned uh, some of the quantity names uh, in the past, uh, uh, gold, silver, by the way, um, which hasn't been getting that much attention, but uh, we're going to bring up the silver price uh, as we uh, continue this conversation. Uh, what about the, the precious metals here? Yeah, I mean, Frank, a uh, rising tide lifts all boats. And, you know, just as during the era of the so-called Magnificent Seven, you know, with uh, social media at some point, it was networking at some point. And I think if this really is a multi-year bull market in commodities, 
uh, you're going to see gold and silver. One easy way to play it, you know, if you're certainly not a day trader, if you want to play a, a general rise in the price of commodities, well, there's an index for that. It's D is in David, B is in boy, C is in Charlie or commodity, DBC. This is an ETF that just tracks a broad index of commodities, some precious metals and wheats and soybeans, et cetera. So, you know, if commodities overall rise, that's an ETF that's going to rise. But, you know, again, Frank, that whole idea of a rising tide lifting all boats. So, you know, just this past week, as we mentioned, we saw XLE, that's energy at a 52-week high, gold at a 52-week high. And one other name I'll mention, if you're interested in playing energy in particular, AMLP, that's Adam, Mary, Larry, Paul, AMLP, tracks an index of just these what are called master limited partnerships. Basically, they're energy related names that pay very healthy dividends and they're in a bull market. So uh, I think now's the time to own all these commodity and energy related names, Frank. Uh, the rising tide lifts all boats and, and they're heading higher. All right. And uh, we're down to the uh, magnificent one here, uh, NVIDIA, which uh, has been uh, a star performer up uh, again today, up $1.06 to nine oh three of fifty six. And um, looks like it's gone as high as uh, 913. What about uh, NVIDIA here after this uh, enormous run-up? Well, I think it's, you know, amazing what the company has done, Frank. You know, we, we follow the, the figures, and sometimes we lose sight of, you know, how amazing these American companies are. I mean, they're inventing these technologies that truly are, that are you know, changing our lives. It doesn't mean they're always great investments, but, you know, hats off to NVIDIA and all of these companies that have been re-revolutionizing technology. I mean, the thing about NVIDIA, Frank, is, as you said, where there once was seven magnificent stocks, I mean, Apple, Tesla, Adobe, these stocks are all down now year to date. They're actually lost, uh, you know, lost money year to date. So, you know, we're seeing that changing of the guard. I, I think I, I wouldn't be chasing NVIDIA. I mean, it's, it's the best performing stock year to date. Uh, but I think, you know, the market's telling us something. It's, it's a new class of uh, winners. We talked about small cap, uh, you know, foreign stocks, commodity related names. I think you really have to be a contrarian now and not just go for what's worked, but go for what could be working in the weeks and months ahead. So uh, I'm looking at, for example, a, a name like SCG, that's Frank, as in Frank, CG, tracks natural gas stocks. So way down from when they were just a couple of weeks ago. So look off the beaten path. I think you'll be rewarded for that in the latter half of uh, 2024. All right, we're on the air live with Jonathan Honig. Uh, silver, by the way, uh, up 18 cents today, 25.10, well off its all-time high, by the way. And um, let's take a look here uh, at the other movers uh, this week. Uh, that includes uh, the cryptos. Uh, we talked to the biggest fans of crypto here, as well as the, the harshest critics. Uh, I don't think you have the, the laser eyes on uh, this week, um, Jonathan Honig, but what are your thoughts about uh, Bitcoin back above uh, 70,000 here? Well, you know, I'll say this and just quickly about silver, Frank. I mean, if you look at that longer term chart and, you know, when you're when you're involved in markets, you really have to have a, at least a three to six to, to one year time horizon. The real money is made over that long term time period, Frank, not just jumping in in the morning and jumping out in the afternoon, but, you know, uh, participating in a market that really goes up, uh, you know, one fold, two fold, three fold, which happens all the time. And I have to say, not to, to step on you with crypto, but I, I think it could happen with silver as well. Uh, you know, the, the price of silver has been basically in a channeling pattern from 2020 all the way in and out of 2024. And, you know, you've been reporting on Cocoa Frank, which is up three or four fold in just the last uh, year or so. Same thing with orange juice. So uh, it wouldn't take much, I think, to see a lot of these other prices, including silver and SLV. I think if someone was looking to take a shot, I think SLV is as good as anything right now in, in the market to own. All right. What about that? What about that crypto story? The countdown is on for the 2024 NFL Draft, presented by Bud Light, live from Detroit, and you can attend in person for free. Welcome to the NFL Draft. See the next NFL stars and experience the ultimate NFL fan festival, featuring live concerts, interactive games, player autographs, and more. The NFL Draft, presented by Bud Light, April 25th through 27th. Visit NFL.com slash draft access to register for free entry today. 
Afford Anything talks about how to avoid common pitfalls, how to refine your mental models, and how to think about how to think. If you sacrifice your dream for the sake of satisfying someone else, that can often lead to ongoing resentment, which then poisons a relationship subtly, slowly, but it does. And if he doesn't want to let you down, then your dreams matter. Afford anything, wherever you listen. Yeah, I mean, look, crypto is, uh, I still, here's my, here's my thought. It's not currency. Let's, who are kidding ourselves? Less than 2% of people who own crypto actually use it as currency. But it, it is, Frank, I think, a hedge against uh, inflation. I mean, this is an asset of which there is a limited amount. There is certainly public interest. I think use is debatable, but you know I see gold and Bitcoin moving very much the same these days. So I think they're both probably going to benefit from rise of inflation. I'd rather own the physical commodities, the ones that actually have a, a use here in the real world. But uh, you know I think Bitcoin is a is a strong market, and certainly don't want to short something that's been up so strongly and and and, and nipping at its all time high as well. So trend is your friend, and don't fight these strong tapes from Bitcoin to gold to silver as well. OJ back in the news. Yep, orange juice futures uh, did hit a record high. I remember uh, last year. I, I haven't seen them lately, but uh, I have a feeling they are uh, at or near uh, record highs. And and by the way, banana price is also going up. The big news this week that Trader Joe's was raising the price of bananas, the regular bananas, from 19 cents to 23 cents for the first time uh, in decades. Um, well, what about bananas and other uh, commodities? Well, I mean. I- I, I, again, Frank, I'm such a student of market history, and you know, go back and look, and you know, really, they thought they had inflation licked as as late as 1975, 1976, and those numbers really started getting horrific in 19, late 1977, 98, 1999, and then really hit in 1980 with the the so-called misery index. That's when unemployment really started to to explode. So. You know, I, I, I'm not a Cassandra, but as I said, I think this inflation, which is weighing on every American, I mean, we, we pass it off as if, oh, inflation is down. But, you know, I, I really fear, Frank, that the, this is a, an economic a hardship that's uh, really putting so many Americans behind week after week after week as the cost of living continues to rise. So I, I think you can look at some of these commodity plays right now as still be a hedge against your own living expenses, given how fast so many of them are, are, are moving higher. Yeah, I was kind of suspicious of that uh, consumer confidence reading we got today, which uh, helped propel uh, the market higher today. The final reading of consumer confidence for the month of March at a 32-month high, according to that uh, University of Michigan survey, as Americans expressed more confidence that inflation would ease and reduce the financial strain on households, maybe based on some of the signals we got uh, from the Fed recently. But uh, it's interesting uh, to to uh, take that in here with the uh, the index at the highest level seen since July of 2021. It certainly helps when the stock market is at record highs. And when gas prices are not at, at record highs, those certainly impact uh, consumer confidence. Now, what about, uh, I know you're a, a global guy, and uh, you, you take a look at other opportunities uh, around the world. Jonathan, anything else out there that's getting your attention? Yeah, I mean, I think now really is a great idea to diversify overseas. You know, people have been focused almost exclusively on on domestic names. And yes, U.S. stocks have led the charge for so long. But even in the last month, Frank, we've seen areas like uh, in Europe, for example, or even uh, Mexico hit new all-time highs before our own domestic markets. So if you're looking a little bit off the, the beaten path, I'd say go south of the border with EWW. That's an ETF that tracks Mexican stocks. Now, there happens to be a lot of commodity-oriented names in, in the Mexican index as well, but absolutely right now, I think it's a great opportunity to diversify out of those big cap tech names. They've led the market for quite so, some time and into so many other areas that are broadening out and pr- finally participating in the rabble, rally that's unfolding uh, worldwide. All right. Any other specific places where you are putting money now and or uh, taking it off the table? Sure. I mean, they have a bo- the, my kind of number one idea in stocks, Frank, it combines all the themes that have been unpopular in recent years, small cap and value. The ETF I like in that space is I as in Island, J as in Jonathan, S as in Sam, IJS. It focuses on small cap value stocks. So you're not going to find NVIDIA. You're not going to find Microsoft. You're going to find some deeply undervalued stocks that really haven't yet participated in the rally. The other one I like quite a bit, this one that you can easy to remember, it's DBA, that's David Boy 
A is in uh, Alabama. This one tracks agricultural commodity prices. And look, uh, food is expensive, and so many of these prices are busting out. I think it could get even more expensive. DBA is a way to play that. I do own it at CapitalistPig.com. But, Frank, as you know, you always want to consult with a financial advisor, take very great care with making any investment because there's always risk. And there's always uncertainties, so uh, do your own due diligence and always uh, trade with a stop and trade with care as well. Terrific. Well, Jonathan, thank you very much for wrapping up uh, another big week and, and, a, and a pretty big uh, first quarter here of 2024. As we promised, we are doing more in 24 at 4, and you're right along with us here. Jonathan Honig, Fox News contributor, portfolio manager at Capitalist Pig Hedge Fund. Author of the book, Price is Primary, How to Profit with Any Asset in Any Market at Any Time. And congratulations on, on your latest book, a lovely new book titled, Can You Really Love a Dog? He's done the introduction and is also the editor for that uh, book for uh, pet lovers everywhere. Jonathan, thank you very much uh, for taking the call here this afternoon. My pleasure, Frank. Thank you. Thank you very much. And let's be honest, sometimes we find ourselves or a loved one dealing with a massive injury caused by a terrible accident by no fault of our own. Sometimes it's simply being in the wrong place at the wrong time. We're good at preparing for earthquakes and fires, but let's not forget to prepare in case we're involved in a major accident that's critical to know who to call first. Clark Fielding became a lawyer to help you in a crisis. Fielding Law is focused on justice and resources for you because they understand how the system works and what to do in the most horrific situations. I always say to put the Fielding Law team in your phone under the word accident, so all you have to do is hit dial. You'll feel a lot better having set this up for yourself and your family. The number is 833-88-SHARK. That's 833-88-SHARK. With the population exploding and increased vehicles on the freeways out there, be proactive, prepare for the worst, and expect the best. But if and when you do need help, call Clark Fielding and his team of sharks at 833-88-SHARK. 833-88-SHARK or go to ClarkTheSharkLaw.com. Again, that's ClarkTheSharkLaw.com. 790 KVC welcomes Matt Frazier coming to the United Theater on Broadway, June 26th, America's top psychic medium, Matt Frazier. Tickets on sale Friday at AXS.com. Right now, Caller 9 wins at 1-888-795-222. You can get a pair of tickets to the show if you're Caller 9. Call right now, 1-888-795-222. Stock market off to a roaring start in 2024, the first quarter of 2024 now already in the Wall Street history books on this last trading day of the first quarter of the year. Optimism over the economy and interest rate cuts combining with exuberance about AI helped set off this big rally this year. In fact, the S&P 500 is up more than 10 percent so far in 2024, posting its biggest first quarter gain since 2019. The benchmark index in late January hit its first record high in two years, building on a surge in uh, late 2023 and uh, setting more than a dozen highs without a significant pullback so far here in 2024. The tech-heavy Nasdaq registered its first record high since November of 2021 in late February, so it's been a record-shattering start to uh, this year and record-shattering week again. uh, This year's gains have been Confidence from investors that the economy is set for a soft landing in which inflation moderates, but the economy avoids a severe downturn. We'll get another reading on inflation first thing tomorrow. Nearly two-thirds of fund managers saw a soft landing as the most likely outcome for the economy in the next 12 months, while only 11% uh, 11 projected a hard landing, according to B of A researchers. The Dow today coming in for a closing gain of 47 points, putting it at a record high close, 39,807. The S&P 500 up six points at 5,254, and that's a record high. And the Nasdaq slipping 20 points at 16,379, just below its all-time high. The yield in the 10-year note now at 4.20%. Gold also kissing record highs of 42.10 today to $2,254.80 an ounce. Oil also roaring higher today, up nearly $2 at 83.12 a barrel. Among the uh, best-performing sectors for the S&P 500, communication services moved up 15.6% in the first quarter. Energy coming in next at 12.7%. Technology stocks moved up 12.5%. Financials also roared back in the first quarter of 12%. Industrials moving up 10%. Taking a look at the uh, cryptos, and we'll talk more about that coming up in the next half hour with our uh, crypto expert. We see Bitcoin. Taking the spotlight again today, moving back above 70000 Right now up about $1,400 to 
9:34. Motega Money continues here, 790 KBC. Good afternoon. Record shattering day for the stock market once again. Let's talk about financial literacy now, which we strongly believe in here. It's more important than ever. Getting young people especially started early with financial education. Let's talk about that now with Maya Korbick, a certified public accountant, founder of Wealthy Kids Investment Club, and author of the book From Piggy Bank to Stocks, The Ultimate Guide for a Young Investor. Maya, wonderful to have you with us here this afternoon. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Wonderful. Well, encourage gather around, kids. This is important uh, for you to hear this today. Maya Korbik has written the book, Wealthy Kids Invest. Welcome to Talkville, the ultimate Smallville rewatch podcast. Title Transference aired October 27, 2004. Director James Marshall, writers Todd Slavkin, Darren Swimmer. I really like this episode, and I'm surprised that you don't like it as much as you thought you did. I actually respect your opinion more than I respect my own in general. (laughs) (laughs) When you say things are good and I check them out, they are. Jump in now or catch up on any of the past seasons of Talkville on YouTube or wherever you listen. Investment Club, uh, the from piggy bank to stocks, the ultimate guide for a young investor. Uh, where do kids? Uh, where do you think kids should start their financial education? Well, uh, are we talking about uh, financial education in general or um, stocks? Because the book is actually uh, all about um, learning how to invest and in stocks. But um, you know, when we start teaching kids about financial literacy, we could start teaching them as as young as four years old, and we can start with you know, teaching them about the difference between needs and wants. Very, very important. And so uh, four is a good age, you think? Yeah, I've actually taught in junior kindergartens uh, some workshops, and I've worked with um, kindergarten children, and they are actually capable of understanding that, you know, needs are things we need for survival. Wants are things um, that, you know, are nice to have, but we don't necessarily need them for survival. And they understand that, um, you know, we need to spend our money first on needs, then on wants. So even kids as young as four and five years of age, they understand that. And as parents, you know, we can even have fun, you know, going into a grocery store and ask them to point at things that are needs, things that are wants, uh, and, you know, start that dialogue and discussion as to, you know, what we should be spending our money on first, um, you know, and what is really important when it comes to finances. Excellent uh, advice. And uh, certainly kids of all ages, I think, can learn uh, from you here uh, in this conversation uh, as well as with your book. So uh, we start with the piggy bank uh, and move on to more uh, sophisticated uh, savings and investments, uh, ultimately to stocks. Um, Where do you think kids uh, should start with um, learning how to get into the market? Yeah, so um, and actually to your point, you know, that's exactly what we should do. We start off with easier topics first. Uh, we don't start teaching them about investing right away, but when we do, um, it's really important for kids to understand. And um, sometimes even it takes for parents to change their mindset to look at um, certain things as owners rather than consumers. So I'm just going to use a company as an example. It doesn't mean people should be investing in it, but a lot of kids nowadays have iPads, they have iPhones and, you know, they're consumers. So what about shifting that mindset and saying that they could be owners of Apple or part owners of Apple if they invest in, let's say, Apple stock. So um, by doing, by doing that, by investing into Apple stock, you know, and having that, uh, those shares of Apple company, uh, they could, um, you know, increase their money and, and grow their wealth. Excellent point. I, I think one of my first stocks was Greyhound uh, bus. And I, I think my father uh, said, uh, you own uh, one of the steering wheels or something like that. <laughs> Pretty yeah. much, you know, I think with the cell phones, uh, you know, maybe they own a part of a cell phone or something, you know, with the Apple cell phones. Right, but it's that's so much fun, and when it is fun, that that makes it uh, even even better. So uh, it sounds like your book is terrific. Now, uh, what is your background? How did you uh, get into this, and, and, and did you have a good uh, financial education? 
You know what? Um, so I am an immigrant, first generation immigrant, and I come from war torn Bosnia, uh, which used to be part of a communist and socialist country. So there were no stock markets there. And my parents didn't know anything about investing and I couldn't learn from them. But I did know um, I, I was always a bookworm. And by reading a lot of different books, I realized that a path to wealth is through investing. Um, a lot of us are told to save our money and saving is the first part to um, you know, creating wealth. But once we save that money, that money needs to be invested. And so I learned that through the books. And I also learned that you know, if we just save our money, uh, it will usually, its purchasing power will usually be eaten by inflation because usually the inflation rate is higher than the savings account interest rates. So we have to invest. So I knew that from the start, but it took me a long time, even though I'm a CPA, it took me a long time to actually understand how investing works. A lot of times people think I learned that in school, but I didn't. I had to teach myself just like everybody else. But, you know, um, it's not as complicated. And uh, famous investor Peter Lynch said that as long as you've completed grade four math, you're capable of learning how to invest. And once you learn it, you actually realize it's not that complicated. That's so important. And uh, as I've seen uh, in Miami, certainly in the Cuban community there, uh, coming from uh, the communist island, uh, the entrepreneurial spirit. And it sounds like you have the very same uh, entrepreneurial spirit when you come to this country and um, don't take for granted what uh, we have here. And and I appreciate you enriching uh, the audience here with uh, all of that. And and I noticed the the book is titled uh, From Piggy Bank to Stocks, not from Piggy Bank to to crypto or, or Bitcoin yet, right? Uh, but what are your thoughts about um, crypto uh, at this point? So, I mean, I personally, um, you know, I do think that Bitcoin is a decent investment. <laughs> um, okay. I know a lot of people don't expect me to say that, but I think there's a limited supply of it and we have mined quite a bit of it. Um, and, you know, it's already being recognized by a lot of other companies and banks and being used. Um, And I think other than Bitcoin, I think Ethereum is probably okay because it's being used as a currency in a lot of video games. Other than that, I'm not too crazy about the rest of the crypto, but that's only because I really don't understand it. So being a CPA doesn't mean that I understand everything. And I never invest into something that I don't understand. I actually always like to take time and learn about it. And then, then I decide whether or not it's worth investing in it. Well, we talked to the biggest fans of crypto here, as well as the harshest critics. In fact, our next uh, conversation will be uh, somebody at uh, Decrypt Media who will uh, inform us about what's happening uh, in the crypto space. So uh, stay tuned for that. Maya, it's been a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you very much. Uh, We congratulate you on your new book uh, and certainly support all of your uh, financial literacy efforts here. Maya Korbik, a CPA, founder of Wealthy Kids Investment Club. And the book is called From Piggy Bank to Stocks, The Ultimate Guide for a Young Investor. Thank you very much for taking the call here this afternoon. Thank you for having me on the show. Thanks very much, Maya, and all the best to you. Motaco Money continues here in 790 KBC. Good afternoon. One-time crypto king Sam Bankman Freed, also known as FSBF, the former head of cryptocurrency exchange FTX, sends 25 years in prison today for his role in defrauding users of FTX. Prosecutors had sought as much as 50 years in prison. He was convicted on seven criminal counts last November and has been held in a federal prison in New York since then. This is interesting. Sam Bankman fraud. SBF meme coins pumped 300 times and then crashed after his sentencing. In the meantime, Bitcoin has moved back above 70,000, getting close to 71K today. Let's bring in Jason Nelson, now reporter at Decrypt Media, who follows all this very, very closely with the laser eyes on. Jason, good afternoon to you, sir. Good afternoon. How are you doing, sir? All right. Very good. Thanks for taking the call. Uh, so uh, tell us about this. Uh, first of all, your reaction to uh, Sam bankman Freed uh, now uh, sent 25 years in prison today. Well, it's it's a long time coming. Uh, this whole thing started in November 2022 uh, when FTX collapsed. Uh, SVF was uh, arrested about a month later in the Bahamas. And then this whole waiting to see how it all plays out began. I got a chuckle out of what I just read here on your uh, website, uh, decrypt.co, Sam Bankman fraud. This is an an SBF meme coin um, that came out uh, after the scandal broke, um, went up and and then crashed. Uh, What do we need to know about that one? Well, 
Yeah, something you have to remember about the crypto space is that it's full of quote unquote degens who are basically will invest in just about anything you put in front of them. And this was one of those examples. These meme coins are just, they, they come out of nowhere, they make this huge splash, and then they quietly go away. But this one did um, meme coins today surged over 30,000 percent. Wow. Following this, <laughs> this whole thing. 30,000 percent. Wow. I, I'm reading the headline here. It says 300 times, um, but even more. That's amazing. So what about uh, let's get back to the uh, the main the main ones, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Um, give us an update on uh, on Bitcoin's uh, latest uh, rebound. Well, Bitcoin's still um, over 70,000. It's uh, at 70,742 right now. Um, it's still on an upper trend. A lot of that is because of the ETFs that were approved. Uh, Hashtag just launched their ETF yesterday. So you have more uh, investment opportunities inside and outside the crypto space right now, um, which is one reason why you're seeing this move upwards. All right. What about uh, Ethereum and, and uh, Ethereum ETFs uh, coming down the pike? Well, the uh, Bitwise uh, filed an application for their uh, Ethereum ETF. Uh, we already had one from Grayscale and BlackRock. But the SEC has been pushing back on Ethereum uh, ETFs. Uh, they uh, they have re they have said that they don't want they didn't want the Bitcoin ETF to show some type of approval of cryptocurrency, um, especially Bitcoin. They didn't say that that was an approval of the asset, but they let it through. Um, they're really giving Ethereum and these other hopefuls. Uh, more scrutiny, but it's it took about four years for the Bitcoin ETF to be approved. We'll just have to see how long it takes for Ethereum. All right. As far as uh, analysis of where all this goes, um, what uh, what re what is considered reliable analysis when it comes uh, to the crypto space? Well, <laughs> um, what we always say is do your own research. Uh, you know, there are plenty of uh, companies that do analytics in this space that are trustworthy. There's uh, Nansen, there's Amber Data, there's uh, Arkham Intelligence. But really what you want to do is just stay uh, stay looking at the news because that'll tell you where the space is always going. And like your last guest said, don't invest in anything you don't understand. Absolutely. Look, uh, watch the news and listen to the news here on 790 KBC, Motec on Money, most importantly with you, uh, uh, on here uh, right now, Jason Nelson, reporter at Decrypt Media. I see your other headline uh, on your site is uh, Dog with Hat Hits All-Time High, Flips Peppy as Meme Coins Soar. Tell us about uh, those two that are that are getting uh, new attention. Back to the meme coins here. Well, Pepe and, it, well, the meme coins again, right? <laughs> I mean, like we said, we have these, we have people in this space who will invest in anything. Doesn't really have have any intrinsic value is just something that they like something they think it's fun and it just catches on um like you said uh dog with hat flip pepe to take its spot but it's only a matter of time for something comes along and takes that one if you recall donk was a thing for a while absolutely so so yeah people are, are making money and losing money so that that's how it is yeah Unfortunately, the the market is volatile, so always be careful. Very much so. So what? So when people see these, um, you know, outlandish um, predictions uh, with the halving coming up here uh, for Bitcoin uh, next month, uh, we've seen all these um, predictions where uh, Bitcoin is um, going to soar. Uh, anything that that strikes you as being um, plausible? I I was speaking to a manager with uh, Coinbase a few weeks ago and. They actually put out a report that tells people to be cautious around trying to predict what the what Bitcoin is going to do around the happening. So don't use past performance to predict future performance. Is basically. Yeah, that's good advice. Jason Nelson, reporter, at Decrypt Media. Jason will be in touch as we follow this closely. Thank you very much for taking the call here. 
And I'll be back again uh, tomorrow at 4 with Motank on Money. Stay tuned now for the 790 KBC News Blitz with Randy Wang on 790 KBC. Welcome to Talkville, the ultimate Smallville rewatch podcast. Title Transference aired October 27, 2004. Director James Marshall, writers Todd Slavkin, Darren Swimmer. I really like this episode, and I'm surprised that you don't like it as much as you thought you did. I actually respect your opinion more than I respect my own in general. (laughs) When you say things are good and I check them out, they are. Jump in now or catch up on any of the past seasons of Talkville on YouTube or wherever you listen.